Good morning everybody and welcome back to another video here today on the channel where today we're looking at something a little bit different. I have a story time for something that I'm very very excited to own and something that is probably a crown jewel in the collection as far as well one rarity and when just coolness as well. Um, so what you're looking at here is um, not the frame, the frame is something that I bought to keep this in but it is indeed the Fabuland puzzle from, oh, may I believe, um, 1970s or so. Uh, well, it's the second year of whenever Fabuland launched originally, and it came with this little poster and story, which we'll read through in a minute. But this thing is incredibly rare. Um, here in the UK, I believe, was its only release, and um, it was released as a gift with purchase when you bought Fabuland sets in Lego stores, and you got a poster, and the story, and the poster is actually the narrative for what's going on in this picture. So what we'll do is we'll take a look at the picture and I'll talk about how I acquired this, and then um, I'll read you the story and we can have a little story time as well. Okay, so as you can see, as I mentioned, this is definitely a puzzle. Um, surprisingly challenging considering it's only, what, six by five pieces? So less than less a than hundred pieces as a puzzle. And, um, but it's just cool. It's just such a random gift with purchase. We don't get like puzzles. We don't usually get brick built puzzles. It was just like free gift because you've got to remember that Fabuland was the weird theme of the animals. And the weird theme of the animals was aimed at like your Duplo age bracket. At well, the bottom, I suppose, one of the more interesting parts as far as like the history of this item goes, you've got the um, trademark down the bottom. Uh, so you can see that the names are trademarks. And there we go. So 1980 from Lego Systems. So this image is a 1980 promo rather than 1978, so I was close. You even got the author down there, uh, printed in Germany by Karl Kauer um, in Verbaden. Okay, so I, I don't really know what that means. That's probably just the printer. They probably just wanted a little bit of credit. Either way, um, this picture uh, like highlights a load of different sets from Fabuland. So you've got uh, Horace's ice cream there. You've got Charlie Crow's carryall. Um, the service station, the hospital, and Catherine Cat's house with um, Mortimer Mouse there as well. Either way, a nice cool selection. Obviously, one of the oldest promos, at least, that I can trace back. I'm sure there are many more bigger authorities on this. But how did I get my hand on this? Now, I didn't know this existed, to be quite honest. And I didn't know anything about its history until afterwards. But I have inherited some Fabuland sets, as well as a couple of a retro space sets through my family. And... Um, Apparently, a couple of months later, uh, the people that gave it to me found this afterwards, and of course they sent it over with this and this, and I think it's in pretty good condition, considering it's, what, 40 years old, would have been used. Uh, you've got a little bit of um, edging around this, which is obviously all crinkly, but I don't much care. You've then also got just a little bit of damage on some of the puzzle pieces, but it's so cool to have in such an authentic way. Like, these people would have had this as a gift when they bought... I had the Fabuland sets for their original owners as well. So then, um, obviously, when I saw the image and they sent me the image and I was like, oh, yes, please send it, send it my way, is um, I went and did a bit of research and I discovered, um, I think it was Brooks, I had done a video on it and he was the one that um, enlightened me as to uh, who and where this came from and um, the, just the fact of how it was a UK promo, basically, and, and then that was it. So then, of course, I got my hands on it and then I immediately went down and found the cheapest frame I could that would fit it in order to keep it nice and safe and flat. Uh, I don't usually frame puzzles, but this is more of an art piece to me than a puzzle. And I'm really, really pleased to have it in the collection. Now, if we move on to our piece of paper here, you can see it's actually got the same image again at the top. And then you've got your story down here in the middle. And then you've got the, the slogan from the time from 1980, Lego's a new toy every day, as well as all the different sets I mentioned. So if you were curious, Charlie Crow's carry-all and um, uh, one of the, I think it was Ricky Rodent's car, uh, 328, 3634, 3665, 350 and 344. I actually have uh, the middle two here and then Catherine Cat's house, so 350 as well. And once again, let's take a quick look at this. I know that this is one of the few to be on YouTube, so um, I better make sure to show you guys all of it. Um, so again, the Reginus Trademarks 1980, Lego UK li uh, Limited, uh, Wrexham, postcodes. Okay, so this sort of gives you an idea that it was a UK promo based on the fact that this was distributed from Wrexham. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So we're learning something here. So let me just read you the story because it sort of gives some more context to the image. We've got the day Clara Cow disappeared. Get ready. <laughs> One morning, Joe Crow woke up. He'd been dreaming so wonderfully, and now he wanted to tell his friend, Clara Cow, all about his nice dream. 
but Clara Cow was nowhere to be found. Where could she be? First he asked Harry Horse, who was drinking lemonade. He also asked Mike Monkey, who was standing by his car, and he asked Billy Goat by the petrol station, but none of them had seen Clara. Suddenly Joe heard a rustle from the dustbin. He lifted the lid and there was Clara. She'd been hiding just for fun of it, and goodness was she laughing. Fortunately, Joe didn't mind at all. He bought an ice cream for all of them, and while telling them about his wonderful dream about a great big mountain of vanilla ice cream just for him to eat. And there is the scene in question, Charlie Crow finding <laughs> Clara Cow in the dustbin. Uh, Clara Cow didn't actually come in that set, it was just Charlie Crow, who is by far one of the better of the Fabuland characters, I think only really beaten by the parrot, maybe, or just iconicness of the mices. Um, Clara Cow also looks great, I actually own both of those. <laughs> Um, what a odd story! <laughs> Not really sure why they thought this was a message, but then again, I suppose Fabulant's main audience was uh, that transition between uh, Duplo and Lego. So, um, it's just a really interesting theme, and I'm really glad to have this piece of history in my collection. One day we'll take a look at the actual sets and the boxes, which I do have, um, all still, of course, you know me, never throw them away. But, um, I thought this piece was rare enough to deserve its own video, just a little short one here today on the channel. And I hope someone enjoyed taking a look at this. Um, if you've got any questions about this one or any more insight to share, please do let me know. Uh, there's a high chance my facts are wrong. Anything, uh, in the way of corrections will either warrant a follow-up video or a pinned comment, we will see. But either way, I thought I'd show it to you today and how I'm choosing to store it. Very, very pleased. Anyway, uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, let me know down below in the comments anything about this in general, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.